Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. <coughs> Today we will talk about ropes again, waves on the rope. Again, as a preliminary to talking about light waves. Now, ropes again are very important for, um, for the purpose of um, basically talking about transverse waves because light is a transverse waves of electromagnetic field. So we're talking about, generally speaking, about transverse waves. But rope is basically a very convenient um, way of um, analyzing how all these waves are propagating. Now, what's important about rope is we have derived some differential equations in the previous lecture, and uh, today I would like to talk about the energy which is carried by the waves on the rope. Now, before actually talking about energy, I would like to change the model. So, rope is kind of a complicated physical object. Spring, on the other hand, is much easier to handle. And uh, if you noticed, I have started the whole chapter of energy carried by waves with springs because it's easier regardless of the fact that the springs are actually making longitudinal uh, oscillations versus rope which makes transverse uh, oscillations. But what I'm going to do today is I will kind of reduce the complexity of transverse waves to simplicity of longitudinal waves. It will allow us in the next lecture, not, not in this one, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, it will allow us to basically research to analyze transverse waves using the apparatus of the longitudinal waves, which I consider to be simpler. Okay. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens. I suggest you to watch it on unizor.com. Um, if you found it somewhere else, like on YouTube or anywhere else, you just have to understand that this lecture is a part of a whole course of lectures. And the whole course contains, well, maybe many lectures, hundreds probably, and um, they're all organized on the unizor.com. They are all organized using the menus. So we have some, you know, some kind of chapters, parts, whatever. Um, also on the same website, you can find Math Routines course, which I consider to be a prerequisite. Whatever is in that course is necessary to know before you approach physics. You might actually learn mathematics somewhere else, I don't care. But I would like you to understand that without mathematics, this physics course cannot be addressed at all. OK, now, the website, unizor.com, is completely free. There are no advertisement, no strings attached. You don't even have to sign on if you don't want to. You can just use it to listen to the lectures, um, solve the problems, and uh, even there are exams on the website, which you can take as many times as you want. It's for your, for your own good, for your own verification, how you basically master the, uh, the knowledge presented uh, in that website. All right, so back to uh, the ropes. So ropes carry, well, no, no waves, basically, on the rope carry energy. We know that. Obviously, well, because let's say the waves in the ocean are lifting the ocean liners up and down, so it needs energy. So the waves, transverse waves, in this particular case, <coughs> it's it, it, it's basically the way how we propagate energy. Okay, now the previous lecture was dedicated to um, basically analyzing the movement of every individual piece of the rope 
when it waves. So our model was this is the rope and this end is basically forced to go up and down in some kind of harmonic oscillation up and down. So this is my y-axis, this is my x-axis. And the end of the rope was actually forced to do uh, something like this. d of y is equal to a times sine omega t. Where a would, was the amplitude, obviously, of movements up and down. Um, omega is angular uh, speed of oscillations. Um, and that forces the rope, which is here. Uh, it, it's a long one. You can consider it's infinite rope. doesn't really matter. To go in waves, as sinusoidal waves. And uh, this particular condition, if y of x and, sorry, and t is a function now this is x so this is a function <coughs> which describes movements up and down depending on the time t of this end of the rope which is at the length x from the um, from the origin of oscillations right so we assume this orange Th this ori or origin has x equal to zero. Now this piece of the rope, which is basically in question, which we are analyzing, has certain uh, distance x from, the, from this, and this describes oscillations up and down. Now, this particular condition can be actually expressed as y of um, x is equal to zero, and t, right? Let's put it this way. So d of y. <coughs> it's actually d of t of the time. So this describes my initial oscillation, oscillation which somebody is forcing up and down. And then it propagates uh, using uh, what we have derived with, um, we have derived the differential equation in the previous lecture, which is called wave equation, and the solution to this wave equation, I mean, there are many solutions, by the way, but the one which we have suggested was this one. So if you substitute x is equal to zero, beginning, you will have exactly this, sine of omega t, but as the x goes further, now the whole um, movements would be basically repeated but with certain time delay. Now, before going any further, I would actually like to slightly change our previous lecture's initial condition from this to cosine. And you will see why a little later. Now, it doesn't really matter whether it's sine or cosine. Both describe the um, uh, harmonic oscillations. The question is, where, where is our time t is equal to zero? Now, before, when it was sine, when t was equal to zero, my oscillations were actually in initial, in a neutral position. If I start with cosine, and t is equal to zero, it means my y, my deviation from, from the neutral position is a, which means I'm in the upper um, position of this rope. So it's the same oscillation, I just slightly change the beginning of time. So whenever my time was with a sign, my, my, my time was with, when my rope was in a uh, y is equal to zero position, but if, if it's a cosine, my time starts when I moved up to amplitude. doesn't really matter. just a matter of when we start t is equal to zero. Now, in this particular case, the solution would be this. 
it's the same thing and it's more convenient for me <coughs> which uh, you will understand why so this is a given oscillation of the every infinitesimal piece of rope which is um, at distance x from the beginning and at time t so every individual one every individual piece of rope for every x fixed as the time goes on it oscillates up and down with the same amplitude a as the origin of oscillations but this introduces some kind of a time delay now what is known about this well omega and a are basically set by originator whoever is originates these oscillations he knows what kind of amplitude and what kind of angular um, angular speed omega he is using or she so these are parameters given by now what is k k is an interesting parameter let me just slightly change it a cosine omega of t minus k over omega x that's the same thing I just took omega out of the parenthesis now this is actually okay if this if function of t is a cosine omega t then function of t minus kx over omega cosine of omega t what's the difference between these two functions well again back to mathematics the graph of this function is basically uh, shifted to the right from this one by this value if you will graph it as a function of time t you will see that this which means this is basically a time delay what th that's what I want to say this is a time delay now it's not just that again from the previous lecture we were actually talking about um, speed of propagation of the waves and we have come up with the formula that V is equal to uh, omega over K now again in the previous lecture if you have these uh, oscillations of the rope the speed of propagation of the front um, wave front is dependent on the parameters of this particular equation it was very easily derived and it was in the previous lecture if you don't remember you can always go back and, and uh, either watch the lecture or read the um, contents of the lecture which is on the website on, on unison.com which means okay if omega over k is uh, speed then k over omega is I divided by v now what is this now this is a really very simple thing if x is a distance from the origin uh, of uh, oscillations v is the speed of propagation of oscillations x over v is exactly the time sorry <laughs> I was too fast omega t minus then um, then t minus x over v what is x over v that's the time which takes for the wave which is propagating with the speed v to cover the distance x so it has a very physical uh, sense it's not just abstract coefficient like in this particular case in this form the solution to the wave equation which describes how our waves are propagating is very very clear now omega is really 
just the angular speed and x over v is time delay until my next um, wave will basically reach reach the point x okay so that's given now let's talk about what I was talking about before about how to um, model the wave propagation on the rope with springs okay I think the picture is worth thousand words so if this is your wave this is your wave at any particular moment okay what I will do I will introduce a little spring here a little spring here a little spring here 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 every infinitesimal piece of the rope <coughs> I will cut from the rope and attach to a spring now what I am just staging right now that I can make such springs that will basically oscillate up and down with exactly the same type of equation now if I will be able to do it I will model basically the movement of every uh, piece of the rope, infinitesimal piece of the rope with my spring, corresponding spring and whatever the machinery about the spring and primarily potential and kinetic energy of the spring which we have addressed in the first lecture of this particular uh, chapter of the course chapter was called um, light energy and I started this light energy from the first lecture which was basically about springs and uh, the purpose was that first I was talking about springs the second lecture was about waves on the rope and now this I will just combine them together I will model my waves um, on the rope with uh, oscillations of infinite number of infinitesimal tiny um, springs each attached to a corresponding piece of the rope so let's consider that's my goal to arrange it now can I arrange it this way can I arrange all these springs in such a way that they will basically uh, oscillate in a way which basically re r the tops of each spring will will exactly be um, uh, oscillating according to the same equation well the answer is yes we can and now let's talk about how <laughs> okay now um, first of all let's just arrange these springs in such a way that their neutral state they're all the same by the way all springs are the same so their neutral position is exactly at y is equal to zero now they can either go up stretch or go down squeeze now if neutral position is at zero and I will stretch it initially by a each spring would actually oscillate up and down from plus a to minus a which is exactly like the oscillation of the rope so a is satisfied by initial stretching of all um, uh, springs to the position a from this position they will start oscillating according to which law well a times cosine omega t right that's basically our when t is equal to zero it would be a and that's my initial stretch as the t goes the spring goes up and down now that's why I decided to change sine to cosine here because I would like to basically have this exactly the same as this one so we have satisfied um, amplitude now omega 
omega is something which we have to really make exactly the same as oscillations of this. Now, omega is known from um, the uh, oscillations of the rope. So the question is, how can I um, make such, such omega actually here? Well, whenever we do um, a, s a spring oscillations, in the spring oscillations my omega is equal to okay omega square is equal to um, k divided by m where k is elasticity coefficient and m is a mass attached to the end of the spring so how can I make this omega now m, m I know what M actually is. M is an infinitesimal piece, which is, if my infinitesimal length is dx, mu is my uh, linear density of the mass. We were talking about this in the previous lecture. So M times dx, mu times dx, is the mass which is attached to this tiny spring. Infinitesimal, yes. Now, k, I will put index ke, which is elasticity. I want to distinguish this of this k, which is completely different. So, this is elasticity coefficient. It's basically a characteristic of a spring. We can basically make a spring with any kind of elasticity coefficient. Now, since I know the mass, and I know what my omega must be, I will choose ke equals to omega square times mu times dx. So basically, by choosing the proper elasticity coefficient for all these springs, I will satisfy omega. Okay? So, now I have a bunch of springs. Each one, if attached the mass, infinitesimal mass mu times dx, would oscillate with exactly these, um, uh, with exactly this angular speed of oscillations. Now, how can I do this? How can I make this spring to have a time delay based on this spring? Well, here is just plain physical thing. First, we will stretch all the springs to the height a that's initial position. And we will fix them with some kind of uh, plank, let's say. Then I will move plank to the right, releasing the spring. But I will move it to the right with the same speed v as my wave propagation. And v is known, again. Since I know everything here, I know this. Now, what it allows me to do is, it will release the spring one after another, and each one would be a little delayed uh, relative to the previous one. And since I'm moving my releasing plank, or whatever mechanism is, with the same speed v as speed of propagation of waves, my waves of these will resemble the waves of the rope. And that's my purpose right now. So I have replaced the uh, oscillation of a rope with individual oscillations of um, infinitesimal masses attached to these springs. Now let's go back to what my purpose was. My purpose was to find out what kind of energy the transverse waves are carrying with themselves. Now, if the oscillations of every little piece of mass, infinitesimal piece of mass, piece of the rope actually, resembles, in my model, resembles these movements of these infinitesimal, the same infinitesimal pieces of mass attached to the spring. So in this case, all these masses 
are moving up and down and in this case they're all moving up and down but energy is transferred somehow so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out how much energy is concentrated in one wavelength of the oscillations either this and this doesn't really matter right because it's the same pieces of <coughs> the same pieces of mass attached in this case to a rope in this case to individual springs but they carry exactly the same energy because they have exactly the same motions which means exactly the same forces are acting on these um, uh, on these individual pieces of mass and that's why I can say that I can actually summarize energy of these springs and that would be exactly the same as the amount of energy one particular wave of the length lambda which is wavelength um, is, is carrying <coughs> so again I have built the model that's good right now I'm basically stating that using this model I can um, I can basically replace the up and down movements on the rope to up and down movements of the ends of these springs and the same mu times dx individual pieces of mass is attached to each spring here as in each piece on the on the rope so they're moving in exactly the same fashion which means they have exactly the same energy potential energy and kinetic energy and that's what i will actually do this type of research in next lecture i just want to say that what i have to do is since i know about potential and kinetic energy of every individual piece every individual tiny string all i have to do i have to integrate them on any uh, wavelength let's say from 0 to lambda or from 25 lambda to 26 lambda doesn't really matter because it's all periodic so this integration will give me the amount of energy one particular wave carries now what else is important here um, well basically that's it I mean I have expressed lambda but that's a technicality right now I don't think we need it whenever we will address next lecture the um, the wavelengths I will uh, derive the value of all the parameters based on individual characteristics of the wave uh, which we have on the on the rope so that's the explanation of my approach how do I calculate the amount of energy in, in one wavelength? You see, it's, it's not really easy because as far as kinetic energy it might be a little easier because we know how each point is moving up and down. As far as potential energy it's not as easy because it's related to tension of the rope and the tension has all the different angles at different times. Here the the uh, the potential energy is much easier it's basically we have already addressed it many times if you stretch it by by amount of whatever I don't know why the potential energy I think it's one half uh, coefficient coefficient of uh, elasticity times y square we have already uh, done this a few times and uh, my first lecture in this uh, in this chapter um, devoted to energy is basically uh, about der der derivation of this formula as well um, now the next lecture will basically summarize all three previous lectures which I had in this particular in this particular chapter the first lecture was dedicated to spring the second lecture was dedicated to uh, wave equation for the rope that's transverse the third lecture is this one it combines the um, spring model using this thing it combines and uses 
uh, for, uh, for the transverse, for the rope. And the next lecture would actually be about energy uh, of the uh, rope using the model related to springs. Okay, that's it for today. I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. Um, they're probably a little bit better organized than this particular uh, whiteboard. But, and, and there is a better picture than this one. But uh, the idea is, again, as I was saying, first longitudinal uh, the springs, then transverse with the rope. This one combines them together. It models transverse with a bunch of uh, longitudinal um, oscillations of many, many, infinite number of springs, actually. And the next lecture will be about the energy, and I will use this model to get energy for this. That's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.